to the Mental Advantage Podcast. Whether you're an athlete trying to perform at your best when it counts the most, a coach or business leader trying to get more out of your team, or someone looking for more personal growth, this is the place for you. This podcast is your map to guide you to the right mindset, systems, and strategies you need to become the best version of yourself. And now, here's John Cullen and Brandon Allen. All right, welcome uh, to the show, Brandon. Uh, it, we had the, another week off last week. I feel like, and just for those listeners who tune in every week, um, it's not ever intentional necessarily that we're taking weeks off. Now, there are times where we take weeks <laughs> off for vacation or holidays or something like that, but it seems like the last couple were not necessarily intentional uh, breaks. Well, for sure. I mean, we, <clears throat> I think, um, juggling um both you know the schedules whether it's family schedule work schedule <clears throat> and plus we you know i think with the content that we provide and we're providing um some really good guests in my opinion and so yeah. we have to work around their schedules as well right so yeah. it can be a challenge yeah, exactly. So it's uh, one of those things that speaking of guests, we've got some good ones coming up. We'll talk a little bit uh, about later in the show. Um, but we had, you know, right before our break last week, we had a great one in China McCarney and still are getting a lot of feedback from sure. that particular episode. Um, everybody, you know, what really resonates with people and, you know, it definitely is something we talked about um, is just his you know, the way he's so vulnerable and just opens up about all of the challenges he has. And, and that's, that's a really cool thing. And it seems like with, you know, whether it was listeners that we know that, you know, call or text or whatever people that send in emails, that was something that really uh, hit home with everyone is just how open he is. Yeah. And if, I mean, even if you followed him last week, you know, he was talking about a friend of his, who had like an open house, right? It's, he was like, it's not even my open house. And he said something to the effect of, and I'm having to, you know, take Tums and right. You know, I, I, his anxiety level for his friend was just kind of through the roof. But I think, I think John, that's the kind of stuff that makes him, uh, you know, a, a, a favorite for, for our, our listeners, because to your point, I mean, he'll let you know straight away, like, this is how I'm feeling. And he's an empath. Like, he feels what his friends feel. And so, um, you know, that's he, – he, he's, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. Yeah, so one of the things we talked about uh, for you listeners is – you may remember is the mental health manual that China has on his website – um, and we, we kind of touched on it. Brandon and I tonight are going to just go through a couple of the topics that are in there, because as I said on the show, you know, it, it's broken down into sections and I want to say there's probably about 12 or 14. Um, and I know we touched on a couple of those with China, but I also wanted to make sure that we just dove into a few more uh, of those just because I think it's important that people understand, you know, there's different resources in that manual that are, again, like China was saying is, Hey, these are just things that I've tried over his, the, the journey he's been on. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things that hopefully somebody listening will maybe hear one of these and say, you know what, I, I'd like to get that manual just for, for this reason. For sure. And, and, you know, we talked about it on the show. There are so many, of those kind of resource snapshots or, or whatever you want to call them. And it's, it's, you know, picking two or three of them, maybe four and applying those and it's finding your own recipe. So whether it's the, the, I mean, everybody needs to probably understand the importance of sleep when it comes to mental health. And there are components that I think probably everybody should focus on and then you have the other stuff like meditation where that really may resonate with some folks for some folks it, it may not uh journaling 
<clears throat> you know, some folks find that to be a practice that they can really pour themselves into and, and others find that they don't have the time or, or they don't get the benefit out of it. So <clears throat> I think, I think what I love about that mental open um, mental health manual is just spend some time. I would encourage a listener to spend some time in it, see what resonates, try some things for a little bit. You know, it's kind of like what we learned from Nina Sossman, um, you know, several months ago, when you start to realize, and, and stoicism does a lot of this, right? When you start to realize that there's a finite period of time, but, but, but you have more than you think, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> Trying some of these things for a month or two, it really isn't that long, right? Um, if you can be consistent with it, the, the benefit that you would get is, is immense. Yeah, no doubt about it. What was I was trying as you were saying that about the finite time to think of that uh, quote, something about you gro we grossly overestimate what we can do in a, a day and underestimate what we can do in a lifetime or something For like sure. that. I, 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 sure. you know, I'm sure there's some listener saying it as they're listening to this <laughs> in the car. Uh, no, but it, it it's so true, and and I think it's it's another thing that I thought about was. You know, um, one of the first sections in the book was that bad habits to avoid. Mm -hmm. And I was talk I was thinking about back speaking of previous guests to Brian Kite when he was talking mm -hmm. about, you know, a lot of times when you're trying to accomplish a goal, it's not always about doing something. It's sometimes about don't it's just like start with don't, right? Like sure. instead of, you know, adding exercise route like if you want to lose weight instead of adding the exercise and the diet and all these other things or whatever it's just you know how about starting with don't eat sugar. late at night yeah or, or don't or eat whatever. sugar right i yeah. mean it, it, yeah to your point it's it's easier to implement those types of things if you just if part of it is just avoidance yeah right like just of, of, of instead of worrying about what you have to do, whether you're counting macros or you're doing this, that, or the other, how about you just don't eat four donuts for breakfast? Right. right, right? right. I mean, yeah, like that's, that's the place to start. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, I think that's, um, I, I like that. I like that a lot. And, and, you know, and China talks about a lot of stuff in here in that, in that book. Right. And then, and part of it, and you, you touched on it in the episode, was, you know, you have to replace that bad, that quote unquote bad habit with something like it's not just going to go away. <clears throat> right. So what can you do? What can you use to replace it? And, um, you know, he mentions that he mentions goal setting. I mean, there, there's so much in this book to, to digest. Yeah. And, and guys, uh, like we talked about on the show, but it's worth repeating. So in order to get that manual, you can go either to www.aaadf.org, uh, which is Athletes Against Anxiety and Depression Foundation. Or like I said on the show is just Google China McCarney uh, and mental health manual, and I'm sure it'll pull up as well, but it's well worth it. So many different resources. I mean, we've just talked about a couple of the things here, um, but it's definitely something that at the end of the day, I think the last word on that is when China said, you know, you still have to act. You still have sure. to start. It's the, what's the thing, you know, it's the start that stops most people mm -hmm. is these are all great resources, but if you don't put them into action, then they're, it's just words on paper and, and it's not sure. going to help you uh, break, you know, out of uh, whatever it is that you're dealing with at that particular time. So speaking of which, um, you know, I was this whole mental health manual, you know, we're, we're talking about China as a coach. He's somebody that's sharing some things that coaches uh, have worked with him on as far mm -hmm. as, you know, some of these techniques and strategies. Um, Hannah Huseman, you've heard 
probably me mention her before Brandon is a mental performance coordinator for the Texas Rangers. She yeah. used to be with the Philadelphia Phillies and I was following, I follow her on social media and I saw a quote she had the other day. I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, she was saying that as coaches, our entire job is to understand our players. We sometimes get so caught up in helping the performer that we lose sight of the person to truly understand your players. You have to understand the person too. And, you know, when I read this quote, it really resonated with me because I I always say to players that I've coached in the past and currently as a leader in business, I tell people who work on my team is it's always, you know, my identifying your blind spots, my uh, working with you as a coach and providing that feedback is always going to be about the action or the performance and not the performer like it's never personal like you have to to separate those two things as a coach you have to when you're giving feedback make sure that all of your feedback is geared towards Mm -hmm. that performance piece and not making it personal but there is a second part to that though is you do have to get to know the person individually so that you can tailor the way that you coach and approach them uh, to that particular person. Yeah. I love that quote. So, so I know we've talked about this before and and this is actually a little different than what we've mentioned before, but you know, they, they need to know you care before they care to know what you know. Yeah. 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 One of the things that I've started to do is I, I'm asking my, my players not only not only trying to show them that I care for them but also as a coach because there's so many different ways that players learn now right especially these this younger group they're so visual um they they take so many cues now from YouTube from you know the TikTok, the, Instagram. Yeah. I, and I mean, so as a coach, what I find to be really challenging now is I want to know how you learn. Um, and I, I want to know how you can absorb what I'm trying to say. And I have to figure out a way now because I can't stand in front of a team for 10 or 15 minutes and go through base running right i've got to show them in about 45 seconds yeah let them digest it work on it and then move on to the next thing right yeah it's it it, the the it's helped me evolve as a coach um but it is it is a challenge today because you you really have to understand who and what you're dealing with. And I, I love the quote. And I think as any coach, you, you always want to put those kids into successful, relatively successful positions, but in practice, you want them to be uncomfortable and you want to try to push them to, to the limit of failure. Right. Right. I mean, really that's, yeah, that's what you have to do. Um, and I think you also have to be very, um, you have to be protective as a coach um, because while they're with you, you are that individual that provides or should provide them their support. You yeah. Know? Um, I, I had a conversation with the team that I'm coaching with the parents the other day. I said, look, man, these kids are 14 years old and here's, you're part of this team. You have a role as a parent, you have a role. Your role is not to try to coach them from the stands. Your role is not to yell at the umpire. Your role is not to wait until the, your son gets in the car and just, you know, make that drive home miserable. Right. Right. And so I would tell you, some of the things that I am bringing up now in terms of what the parents role is, is even changed and evolved. Yeah. Um, 
because used to, I just didn't want you to come in my dugout. Yeah. Right. When, when we left the field, you know, it, it kind of, it was what it was. I mean, you're their parent and, you know, but now I'm even trying to ask them, Hey, will you provide enough grace to your child? Yep. So that they can process what they have just done because there's going to be some of those kids that leave the yard, even after winning where they've failed or they, they have, and I hope that's the case because I want them to learn. I mean, that's development and coaching is about learning. And so to your point, it's never about the performance, right? It's, it's, it's never about you as the individual and, and it's, it's really about, Hey, can we learn from our success from our failure? And can you as a parent provide enough grace and distance to allow that young man or woman to develop themselves without you butting in? I really love uh, that whole concept. And I hope that the people, and I know there are plenty that listen to this show that are coaches hear what you just said, because I really think as a coach that role has evolved to the point where it's beyond the player now, because Mm -hmm. it's almost a train the trainer type of a a situation here and that you're coaching their kids Mm -hmm. as a player. But at the same time, I think you're really missing an opportunity if you're not doing what you're doing right there and coaching the parents as Mm -hmm. well, or at least helping, helping to manage some expectations or set some expectations about, Hey, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Parent, you're going to have them 24 hours a day, or at least the majority of the time that, you know, I only have them for an hour or two here during practice. You could really help supplement some of the things that we're doing here from a coaching standpoint, that's going to help reinforce some of the learnings and reinforce some of the, you know, kind of tactics and strategies that you're starting to implement. 100%. And I want you to think about this too, John, and and, and the listeners as well. We talk about being process driven. Um, The process doesn't stop at the completion of practice. Right. Right. And as a parent, you need to know that what we're asking them to do extends beyond the field. And I would hope that as a parent, you understand that you, you have them playing these types of sports and, you know, participating in these types of activities for what it's going to extend to their life beyond the sport. So don't be surprised if as a coach, I'm asking you, to allow that process to continue to to flourish and here's the here's the last thing that i'll say about it because i think everybody has been a part and it doesn't matter if it's a team it doesn't matter if it's if it's um trying to to co-parent right um it doesn't matter if it's if it's uh, a business uh group or organization the minute that people start to not support other people and they, they, you, you start to see those cancers grow within whether, you know, whatever the environment is, it, it can, it can sink all the effort that you've put Absolutely. into something immediately. Yep. Immediately. And so Absolutely. I would just, I would, I would ask for the listeners just to kind of think about that, right? When, as they're kind of going through, you know, understand that there's a process and, and, and um, allow everybody to, to try to implement it the way that they best can. When I get a new employee, um, I go through a coaching guide uh, with them. It's just a series of questions that asks a lot of like, you know, what do you think your role is, you know, that type of thing. Um, But one of the 
there's two questions I asked that you just gave me an idea that if I were to ever be coaching a youth team again or any sports team, uh, I would probably have almost some one-on-one meetings with some parents, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it was five minutes at a time at practice, whatever the case may be. And I'd ask these two really critical questions. One would be, what are your expectations of me Mm -hmm. as the coach? And then the other one would be, what do you think are my, what, what are your expectations of, uh, what do you think are my expectations of you? I should say. So, because it gives you the opportunity and the outline right then to be able to have that discussion and say, okay, first I want to find out what you expect of me. And then that, let me share with you what I expect of you. And you kind of have that opportunity to discuss that. Um, I think it's, it's so critical to, um, you know, like I said, just to make sure you're doing that. Um, and I, when I'm working with teams, uh, some of the college teams, I'm always amazed at how we can prepare these players for all of the put the system strategies together. But then all of a sudden you turn them loose. And this coach who's asked me to come in and work with their team now is like a maniac in the dugout or on the (laughs) sidelines. And you're like, Whoa, what are you doing? Like, you know, I just went over all of the things about next pitch and all that other stuff with your players. And now, uh, you know, we turn them loose and having the right mindset and all that, we turn them loose. And now it's the coach who is, you know, still caught up in that error that was made in the first inning and then we're now in the fifth inning and it's just uh it always amazes me it, and it goes back to what you just said is like it just really wrecks and sabotages everything For because sure. they're going to be paying attention to all of that stuff um so yeah i mean one one thing i think also that the listeners should um as we're talking about kind of meeting the person where they are and how they like to learn and um is, you know, like you were talking about, you know, some players are, for example, visual learners, some Mm -hmm. players are going to respond more to what you're saying to them. And I don't know if I've talked about this on the show. And if I have, it's been some time ago. So maybe it's worth reminding, but I was a part of a workshop one time where we were talking about learning how people, uh, what ear they listen with. So you have yeah. like somebody who listens for the how some people listen to information and they want to know the what and the why to it. Mm-hmm. And everybody has a different thing that they listen for. So for example, you know, if, if I'm given directions or if I'm being told or asked to do something, I am a why person, like in, uh, instantly, my first question is, why are we doing this? Um, sure. And that's a good gauge of, of what ear you listen with. So if you think about whenever you're in a setting where information is being provided or a task is being rolled out, what you listen for is what ear you have. If you're somebody who's like, how are we going to do this? Then that's your your, your how ear and so on and so forth is what what do we do is a what ear. And the, what they were saying is the reason that's important as a coach or a leader is because whatever ear you listen with, for me, it's a why, you will tend to really communicate information that sure. way. So for when I'm communicating information to a team, I tend to spend a lot of time on the why mm-hmm. and maybe not as much time on the how and the what. And it's really important. Uh, and this was a good learning for me is to make sure that you're always communicating to every ear that may be listening to you. So you're giving just as much information about the how, just as much information about the what and all of that good stuff. So it's a, it was very interesting workshop and it's something that kind of stuck with me. Um, And you made me think about that when you were talking about being where they are or meeting them where they are, should say. So um, last couple of things I wanted to just talk on tonight, and this is going to be a shorter show than, than normal, but is somebody asked me recently, what is it that makes people tend to be more half cup is half empty, uh, than others, you know, and we all have them in our life. I mean, we just have negative people who are just anchors. Like mm-hmm. they, that's the only way to describe it. They're the crabs in the bucket where you can't, pull one crab out without the other ones pulling it back down. And um, I did a little bit of a, you know, at the time this question came up, I remember, you know, researching it, reading a couple of articles and I wanted to just kind of 
chat with you a little bit about this, uh, maybe even from a standpoint of how we can kind of help offset those negative people that are in our lives. You know, there's things that we can say that kind of resets things. So first of all, um, the, the article I was reading, it talked about that, you know, neurologically, the neurological explanation for this comes from um, the amygdala in the brain, which functions as an alarm and is constantly looking out for danger, fear, and bad news. And scientists believe that, you know, those negative people, it's the, it's, because they always live in the, where the brain's default is. So then in other words, like your default, everybody's natural default is negative thought, you know, and that you almost, and it was interesting. It said positive people develop an ability to evaluate and face up the problems, which can counteract this mechanism of it always being in that default position. Mm-hmm. And it made me think about this is it's true. Like you have to work to be positive. Like it's something that you, it's not going to happen naturally. Um, it, it doesn't happen naturally, I, I don't think, but I do, I do believe that, like anything else, when, when you get into the habit and the routine of your perspective, your perspective becomes your perspective, right? Yeah. And everybody has to have and does have their own perspective. Right. Um, I think I think what you have to do as an individual, if if you have some of those energy vampires, for lack of a better term, yeah. that that are kind of around you. You know, the thing that I that I have learned and it's taken a long time because I used to get really frustrated with those types of people like it it felt like an an invasion on like you know don't you put that on me ricky bobby right. you know what i mean like yeah. i I, I didn't ask for that so don't yeah. don't don't put your juju out there on me i i think what i've come to realize is okay so so the one thing you're not going to do is change those individuals right i mean that is that is, like you said, that's their default and you're not going to flip the switch. So I think what you have to do is become somewhat empathetic. See if you can at least understand where they're coming from. Um, offer them just some grace and love um, as best as you can. And and then here's the, the last thing I would say to that. At the end of the day, you have to take care of yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if they are toxic, if they are creating an environment that is toxic, they got, they got to go or, or at least at the time of their toxicity, you can say no. Yeah. Right. And, 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 you know, it, not to go back to it, but it was, it's one of the sections in China's book, you know, saying no, like, right. You're, it's okay to tell someone no, and that's not being selfish. So yeah. if, if you have those types of people and they are affecting your mental well-being, hey man, ain't happening yeah. today. So. It's all part of the choice. Like I, I tell people this all the time, like I'm a big believer that um, happiness is a choice. Like the things that we wake up, you can choose early in the day is what kind of a day I'm going to have. I, th- this is going to, it's a good day to be a good day. Kind of a mentality, you know? I, yes, I would say I agree with that, but I, I don't know that it's a choice as much as if you have gratitude, if your perspective is one of, Hey, I woke up. I'm grateful that I got to get out of bed today. That I don't know if that's choosing to well, you're be choosing happy, gratitude, but you were for sure grateful for the opportunity for whatever the day brings. And here's and here's the last thing uh, that I would that I would add in there is to attack the day, kind of like we've talked about before, with curiosity, like. Instead of immediately something 
wrong happens, you get a flat tire or whatever. Instead of instead of looking at that and being like, gosh dang it, like you know what I mean, and, and getting kind of a, an attitude about it. Who knows, man? Maybe you maybe you are supposed to meet the the person that's gonna pull over and help you out. Yeah. Maybe you're maybe there's a reason for this to happen. And instead of immediately going to the negative, maybe just be curious about it. Is it inconvenient? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Would you rather it not happen? 100%. But does it mean that it's a bad thing? No. 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 It's the, it's the, you know, put a different way. It's the, do you get fascinated or frustrated? Sure. Like it's your choice of like, you know, you, you know, okay, what, what is the opportunity here? Mm-hmm. What can I get from this or whatever? And I do think it's one of those things that um, comes down to, and I try to always, I always say to people when they'll say like, you know, oh, you know, you're one of those mental performance coaches. I always say, I'm, I look at it more as a perspective coach because you're changing people's perspectives. You're asking them to think a different way about things. And it's one of those um, things that when I encounter negative people, and we all do, mm-hmm. I find myself more now kind of going back a little bit to Tyler Pazik's book. Um, I find myself asking those questions like, that's really interesting perspective you have on that, you know, like, how do you think that helps or hurts where you're wanting to go? You know, like if, if you're um, you know, if it's a salesperson who's coming to me and complaining about something or just getting into this negative mindset is I'll ask them questions. Like, do you think telling yourself those things or talking about yourself that way is helping you get to where you're wanting to go or hurting your chances of getting to where you want to go? And and it's a, uh, it's just really sometimes giving them that like, okay, that's a different way of looking at this. I, yeah. But I would, I would tell you, I think if, if, if you were to ever do a study, I think the data would show that most of those people aren't, they don't have a goal mindset. Like they're, yeah. they don't it's, look, yeah. they don't look at that as an obstacle in the way of achieving something. There's, they're not really pursuing whatever it is. It's just, oh, well, you know, I'm, and, and I don't want to call it being a victim because it's not, but it's, it's, but there's, there's some, there's some victimology to it, right? Of, oh, well, well, this happened to me. Well, you know, Eeyore, right? It's Winnie the Pooh. It's, it's, oh boy. You know, it just, yeah. hey man, it doesn't, it, the rain cloud doesn't follow you. We all get, we all get sprayed. Yeah. Right. So you can either dance in it or you can, you know, waller in it. It's up to you. But I also think we have to, and I guess this kind of just goes back to just being good people in general is, um, rather than judge people for being in that space is sometimes Mm -hmm. we just need to, you know, the old Stephen Covey seek first to understand is try to figure out maybe there's something in there they're currently dealing with is putting them in that space or it, I mean, it could be just a natural organic thing that's happened over a time where they're just a negative person and they kind of go, you know, resort to that always worrying, you know, trying to, uh, you know, live, uh, they, everything's negative, not no future, you know, not looking forward to anything in the future. But at the same time, um, I tend to, I find myself always saying this to my family is if they're like, Oh, I can't believe that person. They're always, and I'm like, yeah, but we don't really know what all is happening. Well, that's, that's what I, with that, that, and that's yeah. what I was saying, you know, at the beginning is it, it, you should be able use it as an opportunity to be empathetic and, and see what's going on with that other person. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, we've got um, some really great guests coming up. Um, We have Jason Holzer, who's the co-founder of 4D Athletics, uh, that's going to be joining us probably in a couple of weeks. We're just still figuring out a couple of things from a scheduling standpoint. Uh, And we have somebody that you know, Mandy Patterson, who's a mental coach down there in your area, who is uh, going to be joining us next week, which we're really looking forward to that. We've been trying to uh, get Mandy on the uh, show for a little while, and it looks like we're finally going to be able to to get that worked out Mm -hmm. schedule-wise. And then we also have somebody who's been on the show before, Andy Reese, who's going to be 
joining us. And since Andy last was with us when he was working in the Reds organization, mm-hmm. he's taken on all kinds of different, um, you know, responsibilities, working out there at Texas A&M, doing some things out there. Um, so really looking forward to having Andy back on the show. And um, yeah, it's going to be a busy, you know, three or four weeks coming up. People will, um, you know, not have to listen to us quite as much. <laughs> Lucky them. Yeah, exactly. They're all like sweet. Yeah. yeah. Time. <laughs> yeah so. All right, man. Well, I will talk with you uh, next week. Uh, yes. Looking forward to that conversation with Mandy. Absolutely. Talk to you soon. Want to provide feedback or stay up to date with the show? Visit our Instagram page at Mental Advantage Podcast, or you can send us an email at podcast at mentaladvantage.net. To have John Cullen work with you or your team, please write to him at john.cullen at mentaladvantage.net. Thanks for listening to today's episode. 